Welcome back, everyone. And it's a pleasure to introduce Matias, who will be talking about the op school effort at Centos. Thank you, Rich. Hello, and good afternoon. Um, I'll be talking a bit about um, SIG, and uh, especially the Centos SIG year. Um, if you have been at the Centos Dojo in Geneva, I'm last autumn, um, there won't be so many differences between uh, this and uh, what I told about the center of SIG in, the, in Geneva, because, uh, well, reality kicked in and uh, we had some uh, internal stuff to do. So the I will, I will be giving a short introduction and <coughs> tell a bit more about the included tools here. Um, I will encourage you all to submit patches and I will also tell you how to do so. And uh, we'll finish with a outlook or giving a bigger picture of what, what are we also including or with which um, six or communities we are currently uh, working together. And uh, yes, I really, I'm really into Lego, so you see lots of Lego pictures here. Um, I saw a, a, a comment on that uh, on Twitter. So yes. Um, so who of you have heard of a CentOS SIG before? and the rest hasn't been in the opening speech. Um, <laughs> so, um, so basically, uh, a center SIG is a group of pe people working in the same area of interest. And um, in this case, uh, we are working in bringing tools for op operators of large infrastructures to centers. Yeah. There are some tools, but we thought of, well, it might be good to have additional ones. And um, the Centers community and infrastructure provides us tools and especially infrastructure to use to build packages, to do tests, to communicate, and so on. So this is really fostering our effort here. And if you want to know a bit more about special interest groups, there is a link on that uh, page. Just go there or found your own inf uh, um, SIG. Um, just bring new packages, exciting packages to centers. Um, so this is about um, providing tools and best practices as well. Not only the packages, but also stuff around that like documentation or even um, Ansible playbooks to get things going. Um, to answer questions like, um, how are my services uh, performing? What is up and running? What is not? Or if you have an oopsie somewhere, you probably want to know what happened and the tools should be supporting you in, in getting to the root cause here. Um, I will be talking about the included uh, tools in a few, like now. So, um, first of all, we will be doing something like availability monitoring. Uh, a bit more about this, we did a review on available tools and thought like monitoring tools are either good at collecting availability or collecting performance metrics, but most, most tools are not good at collecting both. So we built a set of tools comparable to Lego boxes where you could switch one or the other component with another one. And uh, in this case, we, were, we are going with uh, 
Sensu as a monitoring, availability monitoring system or tool. And we have a central server collecting the statuses for services on infrastructure running and uh, we'll be sending that to the uh, Sensu server and um, that is mostly um, comp uh, compatible with uh, tools you probably know like Isinga, Nergios, whatever. So the, even the probes are, um, you could even use the probes you already have in place if you are switching to Sensu if you want to. And uh, the benefit of uh, using Sensu is you get a nice interface and it is quite modern and um, gives you a good feedback on what's happening and you could even use the interface to configure checks. You don't need to SSH somewhere and also you could um, see error logs on the uh, checks themselves, so you get more info, uh, info directly from the web interface, which is a nice add-on. Um, but also, there's nothing wrong uh, with using Nagios or Asinga, but we decided to go with uh, Sensu in this case. And by the way, um, this effort here around uh, here started around um, the need we had in OpenStack. Um, where we did not really have something in place or expected people to have something like central tools for their infrastructure. But reality, in reality showed um, most deployers did not have something like this, which amazed me. So this is how this uh, started. And um, like um, with all or most of the tools we have in Red Hat. Um, this is the so-called upstream for uh, the product we have um, included in Red Hat OpenStack. So if, you, if you're picking the packages from CentOS, you probably get something comparable if you're buying Red Hat OpenStack. Um, then performance monitoring to, to get a knowledge how are my services performing and so on. There are many other projects, lots of other projects like Prometheus uh, Performance Copilot, StatsD, a Java um, project named Focula, and many, many others I currently forgot, but they are all fine. Uh, we decided to build a prototype um, on, based on CollectD, uh, on Graphite as time series database and uh, Grafana. But um, as stated earlier before, it is fine to pick a component and replace it with something else. Uh, like you could use something else instead of CollectD or you could switch Graphite for as time series database and use InfluxDB or uh, even Gnoki, uh, which is an OpenStack project or an off spin of, a, of OpenStack, um, to have your metrics stored. And um, if you know something uh, to replace Grafana, I'm eager to hear. But, so there, I, I don't know any other component to replace it. Uh, there's nothing wrong with uh, Grafana, but it would be good to have a something else, an, ad, an, an alternative. So the um, architecture looks like we are installing uh, Coll um, CollectD on controller nodes, compute nodes, whatever, or your infrastructure nodes, and CollectD is sending raw data what, on whatever you're interested in collecting to some centralized um, monitoring node, stores it there on a database, and uh, you'll be probably using Grafana with an F, not with PH, uh, 
um, at, as, and um, as UI to uh, drill down into your metrics. Um, so what kept me busy uh, over the last weeks was uh, we placed Graphite with Gnocchi and um, this is how Gnocchi looks like. If we are going back to uh, Graphite, there's just a single database and people don't like it uh, if you're going HA. So Gnocchi is um, being able to scale out and also uh, be, um, is able to uh, uh, do um, things in HA matter. Um, this is the um, picture taken from the Gnocchi website. Um, if you're interested in more internal details of Gnocchi, um, either ping me on IRC, and I'm happy to connect with people, or go to uh, gnocchi.yxyz, uh, that's the upstream project. Also, Eichel is giving a talk on Nuki later today. Right, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> so, for centralized logging, uh, um, we went with a uh, log collector and a full water. So, FluentD is a, a tiny tool to be installed on compute or whatever nodes, um, and it's a nice um, tool because it's just a pop on and off. So y you install the, the package and you're pointing it to your log, uh, logs and you're just starting the um, service and it, it starts to stream uh, logs to a centralized logging uh, node. Um, if you're using something else like um, Arsus log or so, you, you probably, most probably need uh, to reconfigure your services as well and um, it's up to you how it f works with your um, service level agreement, for example. Um, then we are using also um, FluidD as log formatter to enhance the logs with uh, more, uh, more data, like this log is coming from that host or something else. And Elasticsearch as a um, store or data store and also as a search engine. And um, as stated before, you could easily use uh, rsyslog or ng or whatever to do the same job. And we are currently using Kibana for visualization on this. So I talked, I basically talked you through the slide as well sending logs, free writing, or enhancing uh, writing to a database and accessing from Kibana. Kibana is also able to um, give you feedback on performance metrics. We are not using that. Um, but you could also um, visualize, like, uh, this is the number of errors we are hitting in our infrastructure on blah, blah, blah. 1,000, 10,000 errors would, would be that nice. So, the picture or the description looks very nice. And then reality kicks in. Um, Elasticsearch, Kibana, and also Grafana have a tendency to require you to run the latest release of their software. And they are not most mostly not supporting older releases, which means if you're having a security issue somewhere, that might require you to upgrade your services before you're getting your CVE fixed. Um, that is one issue, and the other issue is if you're trying to build it properly on the build system, they are pulling in like tons of additional packages. Um, for Grafana, I did this once and stopped counting at uh, 200 packages additionally required to build it. Um, 
Elasticsearch. The search is even bigger, and if you're just getting the source code, it stops at roughly at a, a, a gigabyte of source code. It is huge. So if, if you're doing that kind of development mostly on your own, um, that's lots of, of stuff to do. So this is where mostly you're coming in. <laughs> I'd love to see people contributing. Um, like, I've been asked earlier today how to add a package to the Obstool SIG, and this is quite easy. If the package is already in Fedora, we don't need a package review, otherwise we'd like to do a review on that, as we don't want to um, ship or build um, proprietary code. Um, or unfree code. Um, so at least someone should look at that. Um, and then, um, if, if it's already in Fedora, um, everything is fine. Otherwise, we we need a RDO package review, um, which is the lightweight uh, review process for uh, for Fedora. Um, I included the link uh, for someone interested. And um, we are using uh, Garrett co code reviews, which are which work very well for us. And the beauty of it is it is quite easy for even new people to get in and say, well, yes, this, this looks good, or I want this, whatever. And, um, could comment or could make <coughs> changes. Um, there's nothing like a CLA or whatever to be signed. And uh, the changes are submitted uh, through a uh, Git review and Garrett pr process, which is mostly automated. So it is, if you're hitting the, um, the URL for, for the RDO Garrett, it, it looks like this, you're, you're getting a change and um, you can easily add your votes on this. Um, the, once a change is accepted, the packages are automatically built, which is fine. So no, no one really has to um, interact with um, underlying services like the um, CentOS build system. So, Um, the other thing is, uh, the packages are already available. If you're uh, young installing um, CentOS release ops tools, you could get the packages from, CentOS, from a CentOS mirror near you. And um, for more adventurous people, we also have a testing repository, which enables the latest packages, which are not that tested, or not, not that well tested, because, uh, be because I, I just need your feedback on, well, I have this or that issue with, with the thing. The tested packages are really tested. Uh, the, the released packages are re really tested. And um, as stated before, the uh, Ops Tools SIG um, provides playbooks to get something we are calling the central server or the monitoring node to be installed. So, if you want to use it, you could just go to um, github.com slash centos slash ops tools. There is an Ansible um, repository. You're, you need to clone it and follow, basically follow the readme uh, point to your, monitor, to, to your server and uh, run the play, playbook and it will pull in Every, every single, uh, everything required to run it. We also have docs on, on this, like what is, it, what, what is the recommended stuff, what, what, should we do, what should you be doing, or even system recommendations for uh, systems, what do you need to be running this or that. And something I did not mention yet is the Skydive project, 
We also incubated the uh, Skydive project. Skydive is a um, network grapher or a also to um, so it, it both basically looks at the protocols and tries to draw a map of your network, which is really nice and it's um, done in real time. And that's basically it. If you have any questions, <coughs> please go to Santos Devil. There's a Santos Ops Tools uh, channel on the on Freenode as well. Or send a mail to the mailing list and tag it with Ops Tools, which enables uh, filtering for me. Um, the wiki page, or just send me a mail uh, to my Red Hat address. Any questions so far? Um, just one question. I, I saw in the diagram, the, the flow, that you are using FluentD at the compute node to ship the logs uh, somewhere. Are you doing some kind of filtering at the client side, so at the sender part? So the question is, uh, we are using FluentD on the control line, also on the on the server side, and if we are doing some filtering on messages. At the, at the not at the recipient side, no, at the server, at the server side, at the compute node side. So, so the question is more if you are preventing uh, messages to be sent to the currently not, but it, it might make sense to add that at some point. We, I haven't seen that request before. And I'm, so it would be easy to filter later on Elasticsearch as well. The, as the uh, filtered messages might be connected with something else. Because, yeah, if, if I, I'm searching just for the added value of using another tool on each compute node where maybe call me legacy guy, but Ursus LogD supports sending through TLS some specific tags. So nothing to be installed at all on any compute node and you can just ship with a tool from the base distro to a central location. Yes, there's, there's nothing wrong with using Ursus Log. Um, as said before, you probably are required to reconfigure at least our syslog, but maybe other services as well to be streaming the logs through our syslog too. No, uh, the way you would do it probably is you just need the EM5 login from our syslog to track the log file from Apache or whatever, so the application doesn't know that our syslog is tracking the same log file and is shipping that to central location. I've seen an issue with OpenStack once, where our syslog brought down a whole OpenStack cloud because of the reconfiguration issue. <laughs> That's probably something you would try to avoid. Probably, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes, please. Just about QND, I've heard it's also possible to enable TLS SSL for to have a secure uh, lock. Is it something uh, out of the box, simple, or we need to generate certificate? Or? Um, so the question is about a TLS on uh, FluentD or for FluentD. And if you're using something like uh, O for, insta for installing uh, the uh, client side, Yes, it is already included in the triple O templates. So you, you just need to do the switch. And you also could provide your um, own uh, certificates. But if, if you don't provide the certificates, there will be a, a certificate be generated. Yes, please. When you say that you run FluentD on the controller node, do you mean FluentD or FluentBit? So the question is, if we are using FluentD or FluentBit, yes. it's currently Fluent, FluentD, not mm -hmm. FluentBit. Okay. I'm well aware of there are other um, possibilities to ship uh, logs from, from the computes, like our syslog, syslog ng, or FluentBit. <laughs> Thank you.
if you don't have anything else, I will be donating you 20 minutes of your lifetime. <laughs>